In this lesson, we will continue to study the accumulator pattern that shows up in many guises. We have already seen it in its summing form. For example, to add up, that is to accumulate, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared and so forth, forth through 1,000 squared. An interesting variation is to form a product instead of a sum, for example, to compute n factorial. Another version of the accumulator pattern is counting, for example, to count how many of the integers from 1 to 1,000 have a positive cosine. Yet another version of the accumulator pattern is in drawing graphical patterns where shapes are translated, as in the examples shown here. Let's review the summing form of the accumulator pattern, and then we'll look more closely at the counting and graphical accumulation forms. Here is the example we used previously for summing. To compute 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared and so forth through 1,000 squared, we use a variable, which we chose to call total. We start our variable total at 0. Then we add in 1 squared, which is 1, so our total becomes 0 plus 1, which is 1. Then we add in 2 squared, which is 4, so our total becomes 1 plus 4, which is 5. Then we add in 3 squared, which is 9, so our total becomes 5 plus 9, which is 14, and so forth, until we add in 1,000 squared. Here is the code in Python. Note the three key items. First, we used a range expression in a for statement to make the loop run the number of times that the problem required. Second, we used a variable, which we chose to call total, and we initialized that variable to zero before the loop. Third, inside the loop, we wrote a very strange looking statement, total equal sign, total plus some more stuff. The key is to read that as total becomes what total was plus some stuff. Read that way, it makes perfect sense. When the loop ends, the variable total has as its value the accumulated sum. Now let's turn to the counting form of the accumulator pattern. For example, let's count how many of the integers from 1 to 1,000 have a positive cosine. For example, cosine of 1 is about 0.54, so we have one integer, so far, that has a positive cosine. Cosine of 2 is about negative 0.42, its cosine is not positive. Cosine of 3 is about negative 0.99, its cosine is not positive. Cosine 4 is negative, nope. Cosine 5 is about 0.28. So we have another integer that has a positive cosine, that makes 2. Cosine 6 is positive, that makes 3. Cosine 7 is positive, that makes 4. Cosine 8 is negative, nope. Cosine 9 is negative, nope. Cosine 10 is negative, nope. Cosine 11 is just barely positive, that makes 5, and so forth. So, how would you modify the summing code that we worked up previously for this counting problem? Pause the video now and think about this a bit. Here is one answer. I'll start with the summing code and modify it little by little. First, as in the summing form, I'll use a variable. But I'll call the variable count instead of total to emphasize that this variable is counting, not summing. I'll keep the for statement the same, since we still loop 1,000 times in this problem. But I need something before the accumulating statement. I need an if statement, since I am counting if the number in the iteration, k plus 1 in this case, has a positive cosine. And when k plus 1 does have a positive cosine, I don't have to accumulate into a sum. Instead, I need the count to become what it was plus, can you see what I need here? Yes, plus one. That's counting. So here are the accumulator patterns for summing and counting in our examples. In both cases, there are three key features. First, we use a range expression in a for statement to make a loop 
run the number of times that the problem requires. Second, we use a variable called, say, total for summing, or count for counting, and in both cases we initialize the variable to zero before the loop. Third, inside the loop, we write a statement of the form total equal sign total plus something, where something is the next item of whatever we want to accumulate in our sum, or for counting, we use an if statement and then count equal sign count plus one. In either case, its variable gets what the variable was plus some stuff. Then, after the loop ends, the variable total or count will have as its value the accumulated value. One more example, graphical accumulation to make patterns like the one shown here, where shapes are duplicated but with their positions translated. This is really just the summing pattern in disguise, but it's worth looking at the details. Let's write the code line by line. First, I make a window for my picture. I'll make one that is 300 wide by 200 tall. Second, I set the X and Y positions for the shape that I want to draw first. I could start at either end, but I'll choose to start in the upper right for this example. That means that the X value for the center of the first circle to be drawn is a bit less than the width of the window, say, 250. And the y value is near zero, since the y axis starts at the top in Zelly Graphics and goes down from there. So I'll set y to 30. Now I'll start a loop. I want seven circles, so my loop will go seven times. Inside the loop, I'll construct a point for the center of the circle I want to draw using my x and y variables. Then, I'll construct the circle itself using that center in a radius of, say, 20. I set the fill of the circle to green and draw the circle. So, this first time through the loop, the circle in the upper right will get drawn. Now we get to a key step. For the next time through the loop, I want a circle with a different x and y for its different center. In this case, I want the next circle to be a bit to the left of the current one. So I make x become, say, 30 less than it was. And I want the next circle to be a bit below the current one. So I make y become, say, 20 more than it was. Remember, the y-axis goes down from the top. Make sure that you see how both x and y are being accumulated here. The second time through the loop, the center will be at 220,50, thus drawing the second circle. The third time through the loop, the center will be at 190,70, thus drawing the third circle, and so forth until all the circles are drawn. In summary, let's note one last time the three key features of the accumulator pattern, whether it be for summing, as in the first example, or counting, as in the example on the right-hand side of this page, or the graphical accumulation, as in the big example shown here. First, we use a range expression in a for statement to make a loop run the number of times that the problem requires. Second, we use a variable and we initialize that variable appropriately before the loop. Third, inside the loop, we write a statement of the form variable gets variable plus something. Lousy mathematics, but if you read this indeed as variable gets what it was plus something, it makes perfect sense. Then, after the loop ends, the variable will have as its value the accumulated value.